Hi, my name is Chuck McClary. I do a lot of the photography and videography for the Cosmosphere. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Nikon 35mm camera that flew on Apollo 17. So we have a couple of uh, Nikon 35mm cameras that were used during the Apollo program. This one was flown on Apollo 16, the camera, not the lens. This was used with a really high uh, sensitivity film for uh, shooting like the um, the earth lit parts of the moon that are pretty dim. Um, so you can look up those pictures. I'm going to set this one aside. The other one we have was flown on, uh, Apollo 17. And this one took a lot of really good pictures of the interior of the Apollo capsule. So this is the one we're going to be talking about. But first we have a few other things to go over. First, let me put out a disclaimer. Um, I am not an expert on film photography. I only shoot film on occasion because shooting film is expensive. Uh, in fact, that camera right over there is my everyday camera. Um, and as you can see, it is digital. Okay, so first let's talk about cameras being used in space. The first uh, camera used in an American crewed mission in space uh, was taken into space by John Glenn. He used uh, an Ansco Autoset um, 35 millimeter camera and a Leica 35 millimeter uh, rangefinder camera. Um, eventually, once we got to Apollo, um, the main camera that was being used in space was a, um, a Hasselblad 500 series type camera. The reason NASA used uh, Hasselblad 500 series cameras is because they're a medium format camera. Hasselblad had and still has extremely high quality lenses, high quality cameras, they're very durable. So NASA uh, ordered custom cameras from Hasselblad, cameras that had the, that had a much higher um, magazine capacity. Um, they also had, they customized them for specific tasks, the ones that were used inside Capsules were painted black so that they didn't reflect off the windows. The ones used on the moon were um, painted silver so that they didn't absorb a whole lot of heat. Um, and the thing about medium format film is it's a lot bigger. Inside this camera, you can see that there is a fairly large um, uh, exposure area for the film. But then if I were to compare that to a medium format camera, um, a media, medium format camera would have a much larger area of film exposed. So with medium format film, when you blow those up larger in a photo lab or when you scan them, you can get a whole lot more detail. And that's how we get those incredibly detailed shots off of the lunar surface. And uh, from the command module interiors, on all of the missions leading up to Apollo 17 um, and during Apollo 17 as well. The reason the 35 millimeter camera was used for interior shots in Apollo 17 is because it's a much easier camera to deal with. Like this is a fairly small package um, and it's easy to manipulate and um, carry around the spacecraft. Um, the Hasselblads are much, much larger than this camera is. Now let's talk about the Nikon F in particular. So I'm going to be manipulating this Nikon F camera because this one um, is one that the Cosmosphere bought on a used camera website. And then the lens is my own lens. So I can manipulate this uh, without feeling like I'm manipulating an artifact. The development on the Nikon F began in 1955. It's based off of the body of a Nikon rangefinder that already existed um, so that it would be cheaper to produce and things like that. And it would also be able to accommodate longer lenses easier. So um, the Nikon F was released in 1959 and it was one of the first cameras to have um, this light meter. So this light meter right here uh, is called a photomic light meter. And it is one of the first ones to actually be connected to the aperture ring and to the shutter speed on the camera. 
So um, this will give you your exposure and uh, tell you um, what your settings should be, essentially. So it won't tell you what your settings should be. It will tell you whether you're over or underexposed, and then you manipulate the settings to get the correct exposure. The light meter is actually removable on this camera. Uh, a lot of professionals preferred to use their own um, portable light meter, their external light meter, rather than a light meter that was on the camera. I'm gonna take care of this real quick. So the light meter could actually be removed. It looks like this right here. Focus on that, okay. And on the bottom, this uh, round part right here is where you would actually change the battery, um, batteries in this case, for this camera. I'm gonna take a break here and try to put this back on. Got it. So we have the light meter on the top. This is what tells you whether you have the correct exposure or not. Um, we have the shutter dial that is connected to the shutter dial on the actual camera itself. Um, we have our shutter button on the top. Um, okay. We also have our film winding lever right there um, that primes the shutter again. And we have the film winding post over here. Um, and then we have the button, this button and another lever um, pushed together, both release the light meter so that you can take it off. It's a bit of a pain though. This down here opens the, I don't need these gloves for this camera, um, opens the back of the camera and you can see in there, here we go. Pretty cool. The reason the back of the camera opens so oddly is because, again, it was originally based off of the body of a rangefinder camera. If you go just another eight years or so, then this consumer camera, the Nichromat um, FTN, opens the way you would usually expect it to. You just pull this little tab here and it opens like a door there. So that one's a whole lot easier, in my opinion, and quicker to change the film on. Let's look at the details of the Apollo 17 Apollo, uh, Nikon F. As you can see, it is painted black. That was to reduce the um, amount of reflections that you would get if you were um, pointing the camera through a window. Um, we also have the same light meter uh, as you would find on the uh, normal F1. We have a bigger thumb tab on this camera so that if you are wearing gloves, it's easier to uh, manipulate. The shutter button is also, it has a bigger flat portion. Again, I would assume because the astronaut might be wearing gloves, although probably if they're using this camera, they don't have their gloves on. Um, we also have the shutter dial and the um, ISO selector are the same on this camera. Um, this one and the Apollo 16 camera are both set at 400 ASA, which is interesting. Uh, I would expect them to be set at either 160 or 1000, but they're set at 400. The post, the uh, rewinding post up here is different, again, so that you can manipulate it with gloves on. But to open it, you definitely can't have uh, at least not spacesuit gloves on because it still has that little tab. You'll still take off the entire back. So there's the entire back right there. You can see that it's pretty immaculate on the inside because it was only used for one week. All right, I'll put that back on. So that was the Apollo 17 Nikon F. Thank you very much for watching. Sup, nerds? That's probably not a good intro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <please. laughs> oh boy, it's not very easy to remove. There we go. Apollo seventeen, or uh, the uh, oh, ah. I opened this this morning and realized real fast that there was film in there. Like, slammed the door shut. Like, <laughs> where was I? Anyway.